What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this calculator with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build this calculator. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, so in this video, we're gonna to start to build this calculator app. So this is gonna take us a few videos. In this video, we'll mostly just build out the GUI. It won't really do much after we're done with this video. And then in the next video, we'll start on the actual functionality. But up until now, we've been learning all the basics with Kivi. I thought it might be time to take a little break, pull back a little bit and actually build something fun. And a calculator app is sort of a common first app to build when you're sort of learning how to do things like this because it allows us to do all kinds of moving parts. There's like obviously a GUI, it has functionality. Each of these buttons do different things. We can you know build different functions and things like that. And it's a lot of fun. So, all right, that's what we're gonna do in this video. So I've got a file called calc.py and a file called calc.kv. This is the same exact starter code we've been working on up until now. I just changed this to point to the calc.kv file. And let's come down here and instead of calling this awesome app, let's call this calculator app. And down here, we'll also change this to calculator app. Okay, now the first thing I wanna do is set the size of our app. And we haven't really looked at this yet, but all we have to do to set the size, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, but we can go from kivi.core.window, and we've looked at this in the past for other things. We wanna import window, and this is a capital W. And then here, let's just uh, set the app size. And we can go window.size and set this equal to, I'm gonna say 500 by 700. That's probably a pretty good size. Go ahead and save this, capital W, notice there. And uh, okay, so let's go ahead and run this just to make sure we did that right. Python, Python calc.py and calculator. I spelled calculator wrong. It is the Friday after Thanksgiving. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. If you're in America celebrating it, Everyone else, hope you had a good Thursday, but I am in a food coma, as you can tell by the fact that I misspelled calculator <laughs> right there. All right, so let's save this and run it. Boom, all right, so we got 500 by 700, looking good so far. So now let's head over to our calc.kv file, and let's start out with a box layout because this is just gonna be very clearly up and down. And inside of this box layout, We've got our orientation set to vertical. We've got the size set to the root width and the root height of the app itself. Now we can create a text input box. And for now, let's give this an ID of calc underscore input. We'll work on, we'll use that later. And I wanna set the text equal to zero. So when the app starts, I want zero to be in the little text input, input field at the top of the thing. Now we also wanna give this a H align of right. And we haven't looked at hline yet. Hline aligns the text inside the text box. So normally it's on the left-hand side. This will put it on the right-hand side. Uh, you know, if you look at regular calculators, they're always sort of blinking in the top right-hand corner. So that's what we wanna set that to. Uh, we can also give this a font underscore size. We wanna make this really big. So I'm gonna put that at 65. And let's give this a size underscore hint of let's say one by 0.15. So that'll stretch one all the way across and it'll be 0.5% of the app. So it'll be kind of skinny at the top. Otherwise it would be huge, like you know, like it usually is. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Might as well run this to make sure that looked okay. And it's the only thing there, so it's taken up the entire space. Uh, that'll change in a minute, but you'll notice this is right here on the, on the right hand side. That's where that H line thing comes from. So, okay, so far so good. Now for the rest of the buttons, we want the best, probably the easiest way to do this is to inside of our box layout, create a grid layout. And we can do that. And we can set the calls. How many, col how many columns do we want? Well, we probably want four. And how many rows do we want? For now, let's say five. So we're gonna have four buttons across by five rows down, right? And then here we can just start to define our buttons, right? So we're gonna start out with a size underscore hint of let's say 0.2 by 0.2. Let's give this a font underscore size of like 32. 
And for now, let's give this a text of something. This one will be just uh, like that. So let me comment this row. So we're gonna want four columns across, so that's four buttons. So I'm just gonna paste these in. That's two, three, four. So we want five rows of these. So I'm just gonna copy all of this. And let's go one, two, three, four, five. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. See how badly we messed that up. Not too bad. So we've got one, two, three, four buttons across by one, two, three, four, five buttons down. They all have the same thing in them for now, but uh, okay, pretty simple. Next, just sort of the tedious thing of going through here and changing these from percentage signs to whatever we want. If we look at the sort of Windows calculator, I'm seeing a percentage sign, C, E, C, and this thing, but we're not gonna put that, we're gonna put this uh, division instead. So let's pull up our code. And let me just kind of bring this over to the side here. And we just kind of come through here and rough in how we want this. So here's the percentage sign. The next one we want to say C, E. And the next one after that, C. And then the one after that, let's put the division sign. We'll just put a slash for now. We're going to ignore this row for now. The next we'll do this one. So this is going to be seven, eight, nine, and then an X for multiplication. Go down a row. Now we want four, five, six, and a minus sign. See, we're right here now, right? And then drop down another one and let's go one, two, three. And then we want a nice big plus sign. And then uh, we can go drop down one more row. And this one's gonna be plus minus and then zero and then a period and then an equal to sign. So, okay, let's, Take a look at that and see how that looked. Go ahead and run this. Okay, so looking pretty good. We could change these sizes if we want, but this is roughly a, a decent size. Now, uh, you'll notice here we have sort of different colors for the numbers. We might want to change these. So seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, one, two, three, and this bottom row probably two. Let's go ahead and change the uh, the colors of those. So it just you know differentiates a little bit, makes it a little more interesting. So let's start right here, like seven. And we can give this a background underscore color. And remember, this is a tuple. And we just need to pick a different color. I'm going to pick a sort of a, it's a lighter gray, but once it gets the sort of gradient color of the button overlay, like we've talked about in the button color video, it'll look a little darker, but uh, I think that will look good. So I'm going to go 157 uh, divided by 255 by 157 divided by 255, 157 divided by 255 by one. And if you're not familiar with what all this is, go back to the playlist. There's a link in the comment section below and look at the video on colors. I think there was a specifically a, a video on button colors. Uh, so that should be good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure we like that color. So seven, it's a little bit darker color. You could go lighter, but the top bar is dark. This is light. So we've got dark, light, light, dark. I don't know, the variation I think will look good. So um, yeah, that looks good. We'll go ahead and save that like that. Now we just need to come through here and let me just copy this. And for all of our numbers, let's add that. So I'm just gonna paste this in, control V to paste it. All right, not the X. Uh, we do want it for four, five and six but not this minus sign. We want it for one, two, and three, but not the plus sign. Oops. And we do want it for this thing, the zero and the period, but not the equal to sign. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And see how this looks. All right, we are looking good. And what was that? How long has this been? working on this about 10 minutes and we've already got a really nice looking GUI. 
All right, doesn't do anything yet, but <laughs> it looks pretty good. So, you know, we can come up here and we can type things. So, okay, it doesn't actually do anything right now before we end this video because, hey, we might as well make it do something. Let's at least do this C button real quick. C usually means clear. So, let's head back over here and let's come up to our C button. And I'm going to give this an ID of clear. And let's give this an on underscore press. Uh, let's go root dot clear. This is a function. We haven't created a clear function yet, but we will in just a second. And if you're not familiar with what I'm doing here, check the playlist. Just yesterday's video, the last video we did on Kivi, we talked about um, passing IDs and uh, on press things into the back end. So you can watch that video if you're not familiar with what I'm doing right now. But now we can come back over to our Python file and inside our my layout, we can define our clear and we want to pass in self as always here. And now let's just go self dot IDS dot calc underscore input dot text. And, let's, and we just want to set this to nothing. Where am I getting this calc input? Go ahead and save this. We can come back over here and up here at the top, that's what we named. That's the ID we gave our text input, calc input, right? So, okay, save this, save that. Let's go ahead and run this guy. Pull this on over and let's type in some numbers. Hit the C, boom. It goes to nothing. We might want to change this to zero. We can do that. So instead of passing nothing, we could pass zero, right? That might be interesting. Save this and run it because it starts at zero, all right? So, Oops, probably want numbers. Boom, goes back to zero. So, okay, our calculator looks good. It does at least one thing and we are moving right along. So like I said, it is the Friday after Thanksgiving. I still have a food coma, so I think we're gonna cut this one off right here. Uh, but a pretty good start to this calculator. In the next video, we'll go ahead and start working on the functionality and that should be a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.